Aloha everyone, this is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTraining.com going over another market wrap session, this one for September 4th, Thursday. Well, remember when I said about the New York Stock Exchange relative strength breaking down here through these lows right here and how price was staying above them over here? Sorry, let me get back, back on there. Um, today about the wipeout occurred, a 3% down day on the New York Stock Exchange with volume rising, but if you notice, not quite to the average yet. I wonder if my um, my charts are not completely updated yet or not, but here's the NASDAQ, and as you can see on the NASDAQ, now below the 50 and 200 day moving average on very high volume, and a three day of the NASDAQ looks very ugly. This is a very ugly chart. You can notice all of these red bop, all of this red bop, excuse me, that led up to this sell off day. Um, I, I don't know. I somehow believe that this is just starting, and I'll tell you why. Um, I'm going to go look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average just to see where it's at. I haven't seen it all day, so this will be my first time looking at it. And it's now below the 50 and 200 day moving average. So everything is now below the 50 and 200 day moving average. I think besides maybe the, um, let me look at the small cap index. And the small cap index is going to roll over. It'll fall through there because of the volume that I see on the other charts. But uh, what I thought was more amazing today is just to look at, let's look at some of the overall leaders. Like, what was one leader on the upside to us in the chemicals area? Pot. Potash. Look at how that, that one, look at how this looks now. After all the volume in April and all the volume in July, August, you now have a rollover. There's a weekly. You can see all the last volume, hurrah, before it's over. Another one would be in the steel sector, and let's just look at X, U.S. Steel. You can see all the heavy red volume here on a weekly chart, and now a breakdown on the daily with the 50-day moving average about ready to roll over. This is another very ugly um, stock. What's another one that was leading us? Oil. How about that one that um, a few people have been recommending, which is now down 15% in three days? National Oil Well Varco. Um, there's another stock that looks like it's completely topped out. You can once again see the heavy red bars sticking up. Uh, there's a lot of green mixed in with there, but in these green bars, I want you to notice there's negative price action in a lot of this stuff. So th that's the key there. And then besides that, there's then, of course, the old trusty stocks. Google, whoops, already and not in a good trend. And then um, a few stocks that I just recently went short. RIM, completely looking like it's now ready to break down on heavy volume. Another leader of this rally was First Solar. First Solar now looks like it's not the first to roll over, but it's definitely rolling over now. And then we have Apple. And these were our leading stocks. And as you can see, they're all rolling over, making ugly chart patterns. Basically, we like to look at a lot of green. Now, one of the charts with a lot of green recently that I've been talking a lot about is XSI. And look at what happened to XSI today. It had a, an, it had a what is that called? A dark cloud cover, I guess is what they call that. Whenever the open is higher than the close and the close is lower than the open of the previous day on heavier volume, it lost its max green bop. You're going to see me sell 33 to 50% of this stock, and you're going to see me lock in gains right around 76%. I could have sold yesterday, and I believe I, I have sold actually recently. I only took 10% off, though, so I didn't get much locked in. But there's what the nice chart looks like now. It now has a clear distribution day, and it's losing its max green bop. And when the best charts start to break down, that's not a good sign. Um, but the worst of it is is in, in the um, indexes. As you can clearly see in the indexes here, the NASDAQ, this sell-off is coming from a downtrend, and now volume is picking up. Volume is now picking up after the Labor Day um, vacation went away. So three days, like I said, looks very ugly on this chart for 2008. 2008 has been riddled with nonstop selling in the NASDAQ. And, th and that with like the leaders like Google, Apple, RIM, and um, First Solar that I showed you, along with the New York Stock Exchange in a downtrend, and the S&P 500 also in a downtrend, is definitely a market where now people are going to look to short the rallies, the intelligent investors are. So until there's a low volume sell-off, that will then be followed by heavy volume accumulation like the 2002 lows and the 2003 lows. This market, which has already been in trouble for a long time, I told everybody that to top in November. I told 
Brian, who knows who I'm talking about, to sell all of his mutual funds in November. I sold all of mine in November. I knew what I was seeing. I knew I was seeing a top, and we got a top. So this is not like it's a fresh downturn. I mean, this this downturn on the S&P 500 now has already gone down 20%. And on the NASDAQ, we can see from the top in October to now, or, or the top on October 31st to now, it's down 20% also. So all the indexes are now down 20%. You've had plenty of time to get out, and you've had plenty of selling warnings. Like I said, this is what weekly charts look like of the NASDAQ, full of selling, nothing but selling. And our only nice stock that was looking beautiful had a bad day today telling us that this move on this stock is probably coming to an end. So it doesn't look good out there. After the Dell break, it just kept on breaking. And as you can see, the charts look bad. I mean, I can go through so oh, oh that's right. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, well, let's look at some of the bank stocks. Like I said, Merrill Lynch needs to hold this low, uh, low of day. If it does not hold this LOD with all this volume, and if it rolls right back over and fails at the 50-day moving average, I'm going to get very nervous that we could have a very bigger downside. A uh, layman's already proven it's worth list the bottom in March but uh, some of the home builders let's see they're looking like they're ready to crack once again so the bottom doesn't look to be six dollars these things topped a long time ago in 2005 and you've already lost 90% of your money in these already so it's already been able to go from sixty dollars to six dollars um, during since to the 2005 top, which shows you how much destruction can have if you don't know how to sell stocks. I know how to sell stocks and get you out with profits like XSI. I'm not going to wait for XXI to blow up. I'm going to go ahead and start getting out of almost all of it now. I don't waste around. I know when something bad's happening. And the breakdown now is starting to build up on volume, and that's bad. That's an ugly chart. That's new lows. I don't know if the SP 500 is hitting new lows. Um, but it appears that it's going to hit new lows pretty soon. And the NASDAQ, with its freshly new territorial um, being, being below the 50-day moving average, it's not hanging on. So now you have every single major index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the New York Stock Exchange, all with the price below the 50-day moving average and the 50-day moving average below the 200-day moving average. Gold and Platinum subscribers, you've already learned that all of the 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 percent winners in the big winners that come within 12 months or less have all happened when the price is above the 50-day moving average and the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average. We now have the exact opposite on every single index. For those of you that are still looking for longs, it's time to stop. It's time to stop. The right side is the short side. I want to look at a couple of stocks that I've shorted recently, and i got to uh, um, be quite honest. I'm very happy that I shorted Baidu and Rim. Uh, those were some great shorts, and those are some great one-day profits. And I'm not holding for one day. I expect Rim to hit 80. I expect Baidu to hit below 200. So I'm not here for just a quick one-day 7 8% profit. I'm looking for a huge 50% or plus profit like I got on Garmin whenever I only got a few shorts off in Garmin before it finally decided to hit a um, some regular low, I believe it was around April, I was I had a 57% gain. Too bad I didn't have much of it, but I won't make the same mistake with Baidu and RIM, which are clearly breaking down, which confirms the downtrends in all the indexes. This is the exact opposite of what you want to see in the market, so I hope you all are out of stocks. If you're not out of stocks, it's to your own peril. You're risking a lot of money, and you're putting a, in, no matter amount, how much, however much you have of your portfolio in longs is dangerous. So even if it's only five percent or three percent, you are putting five to three percent of your money naturally at risk that you have no business putting at risk. This, these indexes will bottom and they will turn and they will be in an uptrend. And it may be one year, two years, three years. I don't know, but when it does. Whoever has the most money and whoever is doing the strategy that is learning from my past big winners is going to make plenty of money. Those of you who have not studied my past big winners, which are available free on the dot-com site or in video form for Gold and Platinum members, um, you have no one to blame but yourself. Um, this is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you very much.